first look at iOS based on Android 10 running on the Xiaomi Poco F1. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notified of new videos. Hey peeps, what's up? Manji here, back with another video. And in this video, we're going to have our first look at iNOS based on Android 10 running on the Xiaomi Poco F1. So this is how iNOS comes out of the box. You do have Google Apps baked into the ROM zip file, so you do not have to flash a Google Apps zip file explicitly or separately when you flash the iOS Android 10 ROM on your Poco F1. We do have our recents in the building and if you tap on the app icon, you will get two options, app info and split screen. However, if you have an application, say like the camera application, which does not support split screen, then you will get an option for pause application. You do have Google Pixel Launcher installed and these are the options which come out of the box for quick settings tiles. In case you want to edit it, you can of course drag and drop all of these other quick setting tiles into your existing tiles let us now go into settings and have a look at the customizations so nothing much to talk about in network and internet and connected devices we are going to start with ionizer this is where you have the customizations for inos based on android 10. the first option we have is interface and in that you have a subsection for theming so you can change the accent color you can change your headline and body font and you can also change your icon shape from amongst all these various options which you have then you have the customization to configure the opacity of the quick setting panel using the slider which is provided and there it is you can see that the transparency or opacity of the quick settings panel changed then you can configure your font size based on a percentage and you can configure the display size and you can also change the dpi you do have toggles to enable and disable dashboard conditions and dashboard suggestions then you have customization for the status bar in that the first option is network traffic so you can customize the location of the network traffic so you can have it disabled in the status bar or in the expanded status bar then you can also enable or disable the activity type do you want combined which is upload plus download upload download or both and you can also configure your auto hide threshold using the slider and the same applies for the refresh interval and if you want the activity arrows or not next up you can customize the icons you want to see in the status bar you have toggles for all these various options and you also have a toggle to enable or disable the 4g lte network icon in your status bar and a toggle to enable or disable double tap to sleep on the status bar then we have customizations for quick settings in that you can customize the number of columns in your quick settings panel in quick bar in portrait mode and in landscape mode if you want vibrate on touch for the tiles you have a toggle for that and you have a toggle to enable or disable the tile title so as you can see right now it says flashlight if i disable it you'll see that the titles for the tiles have disappeared next when you click on advanced you can customize your battery in quick settings header whether you want to see the battery percentage in your quick settings along with an estimate if you want to see the brightness slider in your quick settings header or not and if you want the brightness slider on the bottom so if i enable this you can see that the brightness slider moved towards the bottom of the quick settings header then if you want quick settings footer warnings or not if you want to see the edit icon and settings icon. so if i swipe down right now you can see we have both the edit and the settings icon let's disable these two options and bam there it is you can see that both those options disappeared immediately then we have customizations for the buttons in that you can use your volume rockers for playback control or if you want cursor control using the volume rockers you have an option for that as well then you have a toggle to reorient or swap the volume buttons when screen is rotated you can also configure your volume steps for alarm media notification ringer system voice calls and you also have the option to enable or disable volume rocker wake wherein pressing any of the volume buttons will wake up your display next up we have customization for the power menu inside that if you want to see the reboot option in your power menu or not you have a toggle for that and you have toggles for advanced reboot 
lockdown option, screenshot, flashlight, airplane mode, and emergency. Then you have the same customization for lock screen. So all these settings or all these toggles will be for the power menu when you are on the lock screen. Then you have the option of screen off torch. Right now it is disabled. However, you can choose between double tap power button or long press power button to enable the torch when the screen is turned off. Then you have customization for the navigation. So in case you are using the old school Android 10 navigation bar like I'm using right now, and you want to swap out the back and recent button, all you have to do is enable the toggle and the options will be swapped out. Then you have customization for the lock screen. You want to enable media cover art or not? Do you want double tap on the lock screen to put the device to sleep? Do you want to see lock screen charging info? If you click on advanced, you can customize your lock screen shortcuts, both the left shortcut and the right shortcut. And then you have toggles to enable vibration for successful fingerprint vibration, unsuccessful fingerprint vibration, and fingerprint unlock. So if you enable this last toggle, you will be able to unlock your device with the fingerprint without having to enter a pin or your password after a reboot. However, I personally recommend that you do not enable this option. Then we have customization for the notifications. You can configure your heads up. So you have a master toggle to enable or disable heads up notifications. And you also have the option of blacklisting and whitelisting applications for heads up notifications, which you can do so by using these two options. Then you have in call vibration options, which include vibrate on connect, vibrate on call waiting and vibrate on disconnect. You also have a toggle to enable or disable charging animation and wake your screen up when you connect a charger or when you disconnect the charger. Next up you have system. In system you can enable the toggle to show CPU info and bam there it is. You can see that we have an overlay of the CPU info. Then you can configure your screenshot type whether you want to take a full screen screenshot or if you want to drag the selection in the area in which you want to take the screenshot. IEME settings is your customization for the keyboard. So auto keyboard rotation, disable full screen keyboard, select a notification and whether you want to see the enter key in the keyboard or not. So those are all the customization options which we get in Ionizer. We'll go over to apps and notifications and then click on see all applications to see what all apps come baked in. So you have calculator, calendar, you have the Snapdragon camera application. However, I am going to link Google camera ports which work with this ROM in the pinned comment and you have Chrome browser installed, clock, Google contacts, digital well-being in the building, FM radio application, Google keyboard, Gmail is installed, Google Play Store, Google Map, Google messaging application, Google phone, pixel launcher along with Google photos and you also have styles and wallpapers. Then you can configure your notifications. So if you want to see the notifications on the lock screen, you have three options, show alerting and silent notifications, show alerting notifications only and do not show any notifications. If you click on advanced, you can configure notification snoozing. If you want to see suggested actions and replies, whether you want to see notification dots or not, whether you want the LED light to blink or not, you can configure your default notification sound and your do not disturb as well. Then you have screen time. This is all about digital well-being. We'll talk about this later in this video. Then you have default applications from here and you can configure your default phone app, caller ID app, default launcher, default browser and all those other applications. In permission manager, you can configure the permissions for all the options which you see over here. So if you go into SMS, you will see that it is allowed for all these four applications and the denied section is empty. However, let's click on Google and say deny and click on deny anyway. And now if you go back, you will see that Google has moved to the denied section. So that is how you can configure your permissions for all the options which are mentioned on that page. Emergency alerts will let you configure what alerts you want to receive and your alert preferences with respect to vibration and reminder sound. Next up we have battery. In battery you have battery saver. So you can set a schedule for battery saver to be based on your routine or you can say based on your percentage in which case you can configure the percentage using the slider which has been provided at the bottom. Now you can also turn off your battery saver as soon as your battery reaches 90% by using this toggle. And in case you want to turn on battery saver right away, all you need to do is click on turn on now. 
Next up, you have adaptive battery. This is something which Google added with Android Pie. And in case you want to know more about it, feel free to pause and read. Next up, you have last full charge and screen on time since last full charge. Then you have display. In display, you have the slider to configure your brightness level. You have night light. If you click on schedule, you get options to turn on at a custom time or turn on from sunset to sunrise. And you can also click on turn on now to enable night light right away and then control the intensity using the slider which has been provided. Next up, we have adaptive brightness. Again, something which Google did add with Android 9.0 Pi. And in case you want to know more about it, feel free to pause and read about it. Then you can configure your wallpapers. You have dark theme in the building. Click on got it and bam, system-wide dark theme implemented in Android 10 working like a boss. You can configure your screen timeout in seconds and in minutes with respect to all those options. You have a toggle for auto rotate screen. In colors, you can choose between natural, boosted and adaptive. Then you can also configure your font size, display size, the screen saver, lock screen display. And then you click on lock screen. You can configure show all notification content and do not show notifications at all. In case you want to add users from lock screen, you can do so by enabling the toggle. What is the lock screen message you want to see? I personally keep it as my emergency contact information. If you want to see the lockdown option, whether you want your display to wake up for new notifications. And if we click on advanced settings, this is from where you can configure your ambient display. So you have toggles for pickup, hand wave and pocket. In case of pocket, as soon as you take out your phone out of the pocket, the display will wake up so that you can see if you have any new notifications or not. And you also have double tap to wake in the building. Next up, we have sound. So in sound, you can configure your media volume, call volume, ring volume and alarm volume. You can also unlink your ring and notification volumes in case you want to. As soon as you disable that toggle, you can configure your notification volume separately from your ring volume. In case you want to enable or disable vibrate for calls, you have a toggle for that as well. You can configure your do not disturb. You have separate ringtone options for both the sims. So sim1 and sim2 can have different ringtones. What is your default notification sound? What is your default alarm sound? And you also have toggles for all these options. You can feel free to pause and check out these options. And you also have me sound enhancer in the building. As soon as you enable it, you can also choose your headphone type from all these different options which we have. And you can also choose a preset in case you want to. While we are on the topic of sound, we can also check out the volume panel. So here it is. This is how the volume panel looks. Click on this icon and you can configure your media volume, call volume, ring volume, notification volume and alarm volume without having to go into settings and sound. Nothing much to talk about in storage. Then in privacy, we have privacy manager. We have already talked about this. Then you have the toggle to enable or disable showing off characters while you type your passwords what content you want to see on the lock screen, all or no notifications at all. And you have different options for device personalization services, autofill services from Google, Google location history, activity controls, ads, usage and diagnostics. Then we have location. So you have a master toggle to enable or disable location. And this app permission is specifically for location. So if you click on it, you will see that you have three sections allowed all the time, allowed only while in use and denied. So this segregation is something which Google implemented with Android 10. And in case you want to change, so let's go into camera and say, allow only while using the app, click on the back button and bam, camera shifted over to the allowed only while in use section. Then you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning. So in this, you have the toggle to enable or disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning, even if they are turned off. And if you click on advanced, you have options for emergency location service, Google location history and Google location sharing. Nothing much to talk about in accounts and accessibility. Digital well-being and parental controls is wherein you can see that how much time you spend on your device. And in case you want to limit usage to certain applications, you can do that from digital well-being. And you can also configure your wind down, do not disturb and parental controls is you know, to add content restrictions and set other limits to help your child balance their screen time. If you go into system and then go into gestures, you do have jump to camera. So right now this is enabled. So 
double press on the power button in quick succession twice and it will open up the camera from any screen then you have prevent ringing so if this is enabled pressing and holding volume up and power button at the same time will either put the phone into vibrate or into mute or you can just disable the toggle completely swipe to screenshot is your three finger screenshot in case you want to enable it and in system navigation you have three options so you can enable gesture navigation which is android 10 gestures then you have two button navigation from android 9.0 pi or you have the old school android navigation bar with the three options home back and recents and in case you have enabled developer options you can always go into developer options and search for an option called display cutout which will let you hide the notch in case you do not like the notch on your xiaomi poco f1 now other than this there's another feature which is going to be implemented or which was added with the google pixel 4 so you long press click on wallpapers and then scroll all the way down you'll see two options for styles and wallpapers i'm not sure why there are two but i think they're going to fix it in the future builds and if you click on styles and wallpapers one more time you will see that we have different options you can of course change your wallpaper but you can also change the lock screen clock style so you can choose between four different options default bubble analog and type other than that if you go into style this is the current style you have however if you click on custom you can of course add your own custom style so you can choose between the various fonts which are listed over here so let's choose this one then you click on next and you can choose between the different icons so let us choose this one and you can see the preview on top then click on next now you can choose your accent color as well so let us choose this one you see the changes on the top part of the screen then click on next you can choose your icon shape as well so let us choose the teardrop style click on next and then you can give it a name so let us just say the name is munchy and then all you need to do is click on apply the system ui will restart and bam there it is you can see that we have our new accent colors and we also have the new icon style in the building so you can also customize your themes using the wallpaper and style option now as for the benchmark scores this is the benchmark scores which i got on this build but like i always say do not judge a custom rom by its benchmark scores so there it is peeps that was the first look at inos based on android 10 running on the xiaomi poco f1 and that will do it for this video peeps i hope my video helped you likes shares and subscribes are appreciated feedback and comment more than welcome see you when i see you